Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here. Hope you had a rocking weekend. Today we're diving in and talking about some awesome swing changes and how these could actually help your game. I talk about this a ton, but the importance of swinging the club around your body versus up and the effects on your swing are insane. As in, when we lift up, we chop, we swing around, we don't chop, we hit the ball a ton farther. You're gonna see the proof in the pudding right here today's episode with some recent lessons I've given. And these lessons were almost a day apart from each other, so funny how this trend continues in the golf industry today. First player, and I'll put the second player, player two up on the screen. We'll see some similar things, a similar theme here. These players are not related in any way, they don't even know each other. Okay, player one backswing, player two backswing. Two different backswings. Way up there. Person on the left lifts their arms out and up to the top. Big lifting, arms are off the chest, elevation there. Arms are disconnected from the body. Arms and the body are not working together in the swing. So you're always gonna find, you're gonna be coordinating the motion of the arms and the body. Very difficult to do. Your swing relies on timing and hands and that's why you're inconsistent. That's a common theme we see today. The player on the right is tougher to tell because he appears to have the hands in enough. But upon closer evaluation, we see a disconnect between his left arm and his side right here. So his hands might be in, but his left arm is disconnected from his side, which means he's got to disconnect the same problem here too. Both of these players need to take the club back on the shaft plane and then return the club on the same shaft plane line on the downswing. We're gonna find a theme right here. Disconnect of the arms early in the takeaway, a lift and disconnect off the body here in the takeaway. Arms at the top, arms at the top. Okay, two very different backswings. Now the downswings will be similar. Steeper downswing on the start. Steeper out in front of you equals a chop all day long unless you drop the club and use your hands. It's a lot of work. Watch this downswing here too. Very sharp to the ground. So definitely steeper here on the left. This player is throwing that club straight down to the ground and he's got to use his hands at the last second. You can even see the club face closing really quickly here on the way through. You don't see the club face there, but you can tell by the time he gets to the finish line, he's rolled his hands a whole lot based on the angle of his right hand turning over right there. Insane! This is all because of lifting and chopping. Player on the right, steep, but then look what he does to compensate. He knows he can't chop at it, so he's gonna shallow out the last bit, but by the time he's there, the club is already way too out in front of his body. And so he's gonna send the club out to right field a ton, usually hit a big push, sometimes hit some of those S shots we don't talk about that happen off of the hosel. Two different ways to compensate for the same problem, the lifting of the arms and the chopping. Let's go into the transformations they made. We'll start with the player on the left. He made the biggest transformation in a short period of time. Amazing what he was able to do. His big problem was getting the arms lifted off the chest early, so he has no connection with his arms and his body, and then as a result of the lift, he chops down on the downswing. So what I needed to get him to do was get the club more around his body, tracing up the shaft plane, and getting his hands behind his trail shoulder. You wanna see something like this image at the top where the hands are through the middle of the bicep, tricep area of your arm connected against your body versus this. So two huge differences immediately. If I overlay this player on top, you can see how high the arms are versus the model. In the downswing, you can see pro starts the downswing this way. He starts his downswing this way. Huge chop versus hitting direct. Now we're going to compare the before and after of this player. Watch as he takes the club back in the takeaway here to the top. So we, we've got that image etched in our minds. Now in the lesson, I told him to connect his left arm against his chest, take the club more around his body, lower. He said it felt like it was hip high, like it was below his waistline. Well, for somebody who lifts the club that much in their swing, yeah, you gotta feel that. Watch as he takes it back here. Totally different backswing. Huge transformation. We only did this in about an hour's worth of time. 
This wasn't like a whole year's worth of lessons. This is one hour. High hands versus hands behind the trail shoulder. That's what you want to see. You don't even need a microscope to see the difference here. It's plain as day. Look at the difference in the position of the club. One's well behind the body, rotational power. The other one is lifted way up to the top. Now he's got a much better position here on the right to deliver the club to the ball. Instead of going steep to it, look at the immediate reaction. Watch the difference in the immediate reaction between the two players. This, once again, steep versus shallower. You want the club approaching as close as you can to the shaft plane, and here he's going down right on the shaft plane versus chopping straight down on it like an axe, like a wood chopper. Two very different downswings. Unbelievable. So the player is the same guy. I know he's the same guy, same shirt, same player, same hour of lesson. He's going to hit the ball more directly because he's not chopping down into it. The club's going on a direct route from here to the ball as opposed to doing a direct route from here straight down into the ground. You see the difference in the angle is what makes the power happen. Hitting on a shallower angle allows the club to travel right through the ball and push the ball through to the target. It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. So he was getting this buttery, crisp, crispier than KFC impacts type position. Amazing transformation in just a short period of time. Let's move on to the second player here. This player's transformation is also pretty huge. In his backswing, he has a shift of weight into his trail side. You see his legs buckling down. I usually draw a wall right here, representing how the body should stay against that wall in the backswing so he can rotate instead of sway. Well, swing's one of his big problems. He's a former shifter and a lifter as well. So you see sways off the ball here. His shoulders are still over the ball, so he can get some relatively good contact, but he was mostly chunking it and thinning it when he started his lesson with me. And then here, as we just discovered in the backswing, he's got that rotation of his arm right there, disconnecting the arm from his body. At the top, he's got his hands behind his trail shoulder. Good positionally, but it's deceptive because he has that disconnect early in his swing. What do we do to improve his swing? Well, he had a little bit of that steepness on the way down, so I had to get him to connect. Same, same change, the left arm against the side, which got his arms a little lower at the top. That's the goal. And then allow him to approach the ball more from in to out, more down on that shaft plane for power, crispy contact. I also want him to get some weight forward so he doesn't shift or sway off the ball. Rota rotate instead of sway. Let's look at the changes. Let's start with the weight forward. This is, this is big. I can't emphasize this enough. I want you all to play your best golf right now. Check this out. Weight's forward in the setup. Noticeably more forward than what you see here. Favoring the front side helps you maintain one point of contact, which is one of the biggest keys for consistency. The number one fundamental of golf, one point of contact every single time. Keep that in mind. So he's got a little bit more weight in the front side. Now, just to go back to where he was on the right, watch this on the left. I'm going to draw that imaginary wall right here. He said he felt like this was 80, 20, 70, 30, somewhere in that realm. He's actually 55, 45. Look at that. So when he gets to the top, there's no shift at all. It's all rotation, turning the shoulders. When he does this, he turns his shoulders in a circle around his body. It gives him one point of contact. If you recall from my previous videos, you'll know that if you turn your shoulders in a circle around your spine, your club's going to trace that same circle and your point of contact's not going to move. One point of contact all day long. So when he gets back to the ball, there's no doubt he's going to hit the ball first and then take a divot in front of it and keep his body inside of that circle throughout the swing. Then he extends upward, which is his body naturally releasing pressure off of the back, so he's going to have more fun. He's going to have less pain, effortless power, more fun. When compared to the swing on the right, you'll see a shift of the shoulders to the right off of that wall, which moves his point of contact behind the ball. Then he's got to shift back forward 
so his point of contact is always roaming in this type of swing. If he works on rotating around his spine, taking the club around his body, his point of contact stays the same, and that weight forward helps him to do that. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, back to the meat and potatoes of this golf lesson. We recall that he needed to take the club more around his body because he was disconnecting early in his swing with a little bit of the arm coming off the chest, causing him to do just a slight lift at the top of his backswing. I want the club to go a little bit more in and around his body so he can access the power of swinging in a circle instead of ever doing any lifting. Here we go. So look at this immediately in the takeaway, more connected. He pulls his body around by taking the club in. And you see the top, hands are through the middle of the bicep with his arm. The club's on a much better path back to the ball in terms of where the downswing is going to be because he's got it lower. He's already in that magical slot to hit the golf ball from. So player on the right, old swing starts down steep as you see right here. Player on the left starts down a lot more shallow because he's already in the slot. No need to change anything. Look at the difference in positions there. Incredible. So he hit the ball 20 yards further just by making this little adjustment. 20 yards. He couldn't hit a 7 iron about 145, but in the lesson he was hitting at 165, 170. This is one hour and one day. You don't need to hit millions of balls to get these changes. We've got the difference in backswings right here with the overlay. Two big differences already. He's got his shoulder more down in the new swing, better relationship with the ball, cleaner contact. Old swing, his shoulder's more level, so he's less clean contact, thinner shots, fat shots. Now start down, we start to see the big difference. Look at this. The lower hands helps him hit the ball from a much better angle instead of being so steep. His, his hands are more out in front of him on the downswing and the old swing, so it's more of a crapshoot. What's going to happen? Club's going to go straight down on the ball. He's going to use his hands. What we see here with the steep and choppy player is that all of his energy is going to be directed down towards the ground. That's what the steep chop is. All of your energy going into the ground, so you're wasting your power. So he does a good job of trying to shallow out at the last second, but he's only really hitting it like a glancing blow like that instead of punching it. Well, the new swing shows him punching this ball because look where the club is in the downswing right here before impact much better positioning versus being out in front of him this is huge huge moving the club more behind instead of so out in front of him why is this giving more distance and more consistency well one it's on the proper path and two the club's got to cover more ground here it's got a longer distance to travel than it does here on the right. If you want an actual measurement of bits on the screen, that's 278 bits. This is 310 bits. All I'm trying to tell you is he's got 30 more, 40 more bits of power, which means this club's going to travel that much further in the same amount of time. And when you're covering more ground in the same amount of time, you're more efficient and powerful. You're faster. It's like trying to fly a Concorde across the ocean instead of flying a 737. It's a lot faster in a Concorde. The player on the left is going to be more consistent because he's not attacking down as much. He's attacking more around, which is that power punch. And boom, he's into impact with his hands backing the club like this and pushing the energy to the target, sending it player here on the right. This awkward angle, you see the hand unhinging downward. That's the classic chop move. And so he gets the impact and he's just barely squaring it up doing this motion. Very difficult to time and do. When it comes to having a model for what we're trying to do in this golf swing, some things that will really help with consistent contact, keeping the weight forward, taking the club all the way to the top while turning your shoulders in a circle. That is one of the biggest keys for consistent contact, keeping your shoulders in the circle right here, not shifting off the golf ball, keeping your body against the wall as best you can. And then similarly in the backswing, instead of lifting the clubs to the top, take it back 
around your body, keeping that connection between your left arm and your side. Get the hands lower. Swing the club around your body instead of up because then you can return the club back to the ball on a much simpler path here where the club, you'll see, has to cover all this ground in a short period of time leading to a ton of power. Ultimately a really compressed golf shot right there. Tons of fun for you. Beautifully struck shots, crispier than KFC. Alright Segudo golfers, thanks for tuning in. Look at those transformations. Huge in just an hour's worth of time for both players. You can make the same transformation in your game in a relatively short period of time. It doesn't take tens of millions of balls to get this right. We do know this. You're likely chopping in the golf swing if you're inconsistent. That's one of the main problems I see in the golf swing today. In fact, almost every golfer I see on the range is chopping in some fashion. There's a reason why the best players attack the ball on this angle, like this. It's because it's the most consistent, direct, powerful route to the ball. It's that simple. So my job as your instructor is to get you there with the fewest amount of moving parts and still get you to play the game and compress that golf ball and get the feeling of mashed potatoes every single time. It's really simple. It's just a matter of getting you into those positions. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you on Wednesday where we dive into some more golf swing.